What's up? It's Wizard Foo bringing you another little update with making the game Wraithbinder. I'm uh, excited to have um, data driven items. So, this is really great because um, I, I got some, some ideas for Wraithbinder on how items are going to be obtained. And um, I'll be getting into that much later. Uh, but um, to have this system in place where um, items can be loaded from data or um, um, or you know like if the once it, if this is gonna be a multiplayer game so eventually a server is gonna be the one handling the data and then the, so the server can just send the, the data it needs to load to the client and you know um, it also makes it really easy to, to debug some things so check it out if I wanted like start off the player with a blink orb I can have a you know the blink orb there but if I let's see, let's take away the boomerang and the ghost sword to start with so we're only going to start with the sword shield and blink orb no more boomerang and ghost sword um we could do that really easily now rather than having to like go and run across the map and go oh let me go grab this blink orb you know i can go and just easily debug at it so let's see there's oh yeah so now i'm pressing the debug the uh the button for blinking and i'm blinking around um oh how did i get the ghost sword oh shoot <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I think I actually just found a bug because, yeah, I must have loaded this wrong. Let's check it out. Let's check this out right now, live. How do we, how do you like that? Hmm. It's in like when you're loading the items, which is an input component. Uh, let's see. So this is probably the issue right here. Ah, okay. That's it. So it's loading, um, uh, actually, we just need to do like, something like this. Let's see if this works real quick. And d dot get int is greater than zero. And so it loads all the items from data, but then it also loads in default buttons and things like that from data as well. Good. We have no ghost sword this time. Even if I blink around a little bit, yeah, we're okay. We're good. Cool. So. Um, so yeah, even the default buttons are loaded. So so before the way it was working is that uh, you would press the sword button and you get the sword. But as soon as you go and pick up a new item, let's say you go, you pick up the grenades like this, it would assign that to the next available button. Um, and that's not at all how Songbringer worked or you know how a game should work in general. That's just like kind of disorganized. So um, I made that so there's a default button. So now the grenades are always like the B button uh, by default. If that is available that button um, there's no way to change your buttons or anything like that yet this is obviously a very primordial game this is pre-alpha stage um, so but this it's good to have this kind of stuff in place so that when uh, when it comes down to it it's all ready to go so um, let's look at some of the code and how that all works basically um, this is where it loads the items so it looks at your item data converts those words into a type and then sets up the item in into the um, into the items map, which is basically just a map of um, items to quantities. So uh, the map key is your item type. The map uh, data it, or value is your an integer representing the quantity. So and then once you once it's loaded that kind of stuff, it calls this function called on items changed, which other systems will need to call as well. Like once you you add an item to the player, for example, the move system detects that you've stepped on an item, you pick it up, and you've got to add an item into the player's input component, and then call this on items change so that the abilities get set up correctly. So this sets up the abilities based on your items. So um, that's also a distinction in Songbringer. I didn't have this distinction between abilities and items. So um, I needed to add that for Wraithbinder. Uh, so it's nice to have that separate now. So I've, now a, a player has a certain ability. So some items don't um, have an ability, right? Attached to them. So like for example, the ghost sword is not an, an individual ability itself. It's always happens when you use your regular sword. So it's not an ability. It's just an item. And once you have that item, then your regular sword swing will launch a ghost sword. So um, this just basically determines which ability you're talking about. It also depends on your role. It can change the ability. And then it determines which button based on the ability button defaults. Let's go look at those and what's set up here in item.cpp. Item.cpp, let's look at item.h2. Uh, item.h, this is just a list of items, right? This would be like 10 times as long if it were Songbringer. Uh, or Songbringer 2, which I'm planning to use this engine for. 
So, um, so this will, this is great to have this all set up too for for Songbringer too as well. I've got this item structure working, and it's really organized and nice. I think I I really like the way this is, and it's going to work nicely for this game Wraithbinder, but also for Songbringer too. Um, so item pickup quantities, see item abilities. These are some extern external maps which you can just look at right here. These are like the corresponding ability for an item. If uh, if an item doesn't have a corresponding ability, then it's just one of those items that doesn't have an ability attached to it. And this is also the quantity. So if you go and you pick up an item, um, rather than just getting one of it, maybe you might get three. Like every time you pick up a cactus, maybe you get three cactus items. Uh, so, uh, but for now, I've got that just set to one. Uh, but that's that's really all there is to this code. Uh, it's just nice to have the, to be able to load these items from data and uh, um, and this will this will be just great to have for the server as well. So when we comes to that point of the game. So uh, thanks for watching this video, and uh, we'll catch you next time.